lights. There we go. Aziz! Lights! Aziz lights! Aziz lights. If, you, if Aziz. you if you are a millennial, you probably know that what that is a reference to one of the best movies ever made. The Fifth Element. Welcome, everybody, to uh, today's episode of Cauldron's Call. As you can see, we are down two players. Uh, we are still going to play today. Um, it may be a shorter session, but we will be running through some, some stuff that I have prepared for these guys today. Uh, I'm Sarah. I'm the Dungeon Master for this campaign. Uh, you can find me across the social media as Loves Like Pie, but you can also find me on Instagram as Geek Parenting Podcast, and we are growing exponentially there, so give us a follow over on Instagram. It's where I post the most. Um, lots of pictures, lots of fun stuff. Check me out there. Um, and then we also have La Llorona coming up in October. I think we have our cast ready to go. Um, we just got to reach out to everybody and schedule. Um, that is going to be a pre-recorded uh, one-shot. That way we can add some fun little, uh, you know, production content to that production stuff so that you guys have a fully visualized uh, experience with La Llorona. Um, and we will be hosting that probably in October, probably pretty close to Halloween since it is a spooky module. Um, but we're just going to go around and introduce everybody else, starting with Vin. Hi, I'm Vin. I play Mip, our Herringon Ranger, um, he and for both. Uh, my um, online tag is Sinjin Kane, ready to play. Sorry, I'm turning off a notification. Uh, Devin. <laughs> well, hi, everybody. Taking a sip. <laughs> Perfect time. Um, I'm Devin. You can find me on all the socials as Devin Godzilla. Um, my pronouns, as well as my character Aiden's, are he, him. Aiden is a paladin of Bahamut. And oh, Kate. Go. All right. So I'm Kate. You can find me across socials as at Clouded Compass. In this campaign, I am playing Krista Delithwin, Divine Soul Sorceress. Amongst other things. Ha <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I know the other things. The other players probably know as well, but we're not going to metagame. We've I'm, got hints. Yeah, I mean, there's, 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 there's some hints. They've seen some things, but no dialogue yeah. has happened. Oh, yeah, so. yeah you guys haven't had a conversation yet. <laughs> um, I have a plus zero in Arcana. I could not tell you one spell from another. <laughs> so I'm like, yep, that's that. that Press us. She, she magic. Yep. Very nice. <laughs> So magic la is magicking. N yeah, magic the magic, <laughs> magic the magicking. It's not magic the gathering, magic the magicking. Uh, last we left off, the party had traversed across um, the wastelands of Avernus, uh, being led by their golden holly fun friend Lulu, um, leading them to a place known as Haruman's Hill, where you encountered not only a hell wasp but several dozen sturges, as well as a Narzugan. Uh, who took Moritz down at one point. He was able to get back up through, a, you know, a lot of wiliness and lots of battle action. You guys managed to finally uh, defeat the Snarzugan and his horse. And um, Lulu realized that her vision was not as clear as she had initially thought and that she needed to think on where they actually needed to go to find the Bleeding Citadel. Um I am now going to turn it over to you. We will say you are still at Haruman's Hill. Uh, you have the Demon Grinder. Um, I don't know how injured Moritz is, but he, he was injured at one point and did collapse. Um, and then I need everybody to roll con saves. Uh, unless we already did that in the last one. I don't... We already did that. You already did one. that? Okay. We did we? T okay. Uh, yeah, I took an exhaustion level. Okay. You took an ex <laughs> oh, okay. level of exhaustion. Okay. So Mip has a level of exhaustion. I think everybody else saved. Um, yeah. For this level, yeah. Um, uh, so you're all kind of I there. Think at... Used a legendary. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah. yeah. So you all um, are there. You notice that these bodies that have been hung up on these um, stakes now kind of just drift into ash and float away as you defeated the Narzagon as well. So really, that's all that's left there is those wrought iron trees that they were impaled on. Is there anything left of the Narzagon? No, he he and the horse both kind of dissolved into ash. Okay. Kind of using the end of her staff, kind of like brushing through mm -hmm. the ash. Um, like the other things defeated here, were there any soul coins in the ash? That's what she's looking for specifically. Do you see uh, in the ash one soul coin? Okay. 
bend over and pick it up and kind of brush it off. When you pick it up um, from this particular soul coin, you get the sense um, not nothing, not of sorrow or or anger or any of the other feelings that you felt before with soul coins. You actually feel joy with this one. This one feels happy. You get the sense of laughter and happiness and enjoyment of life from this particular coin. Hmm. Cressida's gonna pick it up and when she feels that joy she just is gonna get this like smile to her face that everybody else can see and uh, then she's just gonna be like down here I think we all need a little bit of this and she's gonna place the soul coin into Aiden's hand first and then close his fingers around it so that he can just kind of feel that joy emanate and then she's gonna, gonna kind of look feel no, that ahead. and it's just gonna kind of weigh on him and he's you see him he's gonna kind of turn a little green like he's like this was like in his mind you can tell that that joy is leeching in but just holding on to this soul coin is just a little much for him go ahead and then she's slowly like make the move to take it back yeah, and then yeah. hand it to Mip with the intention of passing a little bit of joy to everybody through the group just because this has been so heavy and so dark and so much conflict. She just wants to have a little bit of spark of remembering why we're doing this for this feeling. I they could feel that way. As Aiden kind of comes out of that little reveille, he's going to heal um, eight hit points from my healing hands because I have beat to hell. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, go ahead. Appraising the group, how does everyone look? Like, does everyone look like they could use a little bit? With the exception of the exhaustion, Nip's actually at full health. Aiden is going to, you see, Aiden looks like crap, but he's going to kind of straighten up and just try and loosen up his muscles a little bit. And you'll see that old kind of almost like lens flare shimmer come over him as I use all of my lay on hands to heal almost to full but i i was i was beat so let's deduct all of those because you gotta click through them all individually <laughs> and lulu Mip. oh go ahead go ahead Vin. Mip looks rather guiltily towards um uh, moritz and then Makes his way over to him to make use of a new spell for him. Um, cure wounds. Um, okay. He casts, he speaks a few words that he thought he heard um, Cresta saying celestial um, that, um, as he um, uh, casts it. And uh, yeah, uh, let's see. If we can apply it, uh, for <laughs> hey, Moritz uh, can uh, probably take anything yeah. he can get at this point with um, how that last battle went yeah. for him. Yeah. Um, while you're all doing this, Lulu has kind of gone up onto that dais where you found Jander Sunstar, and she's kind of floating up high, just kind of trying to get a lay of the land and figure out where she's at in relation to where she thinks the Bleeding Citadel is. Um, when she's up there, she does um, she does see what appears to be um, some kind of nest of some kind floating in the air above the ground, about probably 30 feet away from where you guys are. You're all hidden because this is kind of hidden behind like a stone 
Mirage. landscape. Yeah. Um, so you guys yeah. are hidden down below this, so you got, can't see this, but Lulu does um, relate to you that she does see what appears to be some sort of floating nest. Um, and she kind of looks around and she, she comes back down to all of you and says, I don't know where we need to go. Um, I need to think about my visions and figure something out here. I, I don't know where we're supposed to go just just yet. I thought this was the right place, but I was wrong. With that nest, Lulu, is that something we need to be worried about? Are you familiar with it? Um, I believe that is a, a hell wasp nest. There's probably quite a few hell wasps in there. Um, they feed on fallen angels. You are not fallen. Very specific no. diet. But I think because I'm here, they think I might be a fallen angel. Sita so like looks over at her wings and like tries to tuck them behind her a little bit smaller at this comment. Um, do we, with no direction in mind, want to summon the mansion for a while? It will be our usage for the day, but then it would give us somewhere potentially safer to hunker down. As you say this, you actually hear the sound of what seems to be a large group of people approaching. Uh, you hear oddly, not engines, but you hear footfalls and the strange jingle of bells. And it's coming from um, a different direction. Um, probably down the hill and around the corner where you can't see who exactly who it is yet. Uh, but you do realize that you hear someone coming towards you. You're not quite can, sure who. Can Aiden take his helmet off and turn it into steeple and fly up to get kind of a bird's eye view yeah, of who this is? Absolutely. Have steeple okay. roll uh, an investigation or perception check. Use your stat for that. I don't think My stats. Does, Ste okay. does Steeple have stats? I never, I never he remember. Yeah. Then yeah, let's use Steeple stats for that. Okay. Investigation or perception. perception. All right. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, sixteen plus three, nineteen. Okay. So as you warg into Steeple, you actually see what appears to be some sort of traveling caravan. Um, a lot of the people who are there are dressed in very bright colors and robes and bells and. Um, they appear to be uh, there appear to be wagons that are carrying tents and storage items and and beds and pillows and it, it's is very odd. You've never seen anything like this before. Aiden's describing all of this as he's as he's seeing this, and I'm gonna have Steeple go as far as he can. I don't remember how far that is. Let's see. Um. Oh, his telepathy mm -hmm. is 100 feet, but he can go, I can see through his senses up to a mile away. Holy Lord. Okay, yes, I'm going to have Steeple okay. kind of make a big, wide, like, vulture circle okay. to see if he sees any more details. If these people look armed, uh, are they devils? Are they humanoid? They definitely are armed. Um, they are very much a, a mixture of of what appear to be human and devilish and um let me look at all of these they look they have some infernal machines but they're very quiet it's like almost that they've been enchanted by something to to be more silent um you see dwergar you see hobgoblins there's all sorts of different kind of crew who seem to be running with this particular caravan and this is bigger than like an adventuring party. This, this is bigger, like dozens this is, of people. This is bigger than an adventuring party. I would say it's it's dozens, if if not, uh, probably twenty or thirty people um, who seem to be part of this caravan. Um, okay. And as they as they come to a halt, um, just beyond your vision, um, Steeple can see them. But all of a sudden, um, one particular person kind of comes to the forefront and raises his hands up and as he does this 
the caravan kind of forms into a U-shaped, almost like a horseshoe. And all of a sudden these tents just seem to form and pop and land onto the sands. And it appears this is some kind of traveling merchant band. I'm going to bring Steeple back to me. I, I, I know I can't see or hear through me mm-hmm. when I'm it warged into him, but I think I can still speak. So I've probably mm-hmm. been narrating this as, as, as we go. Okay. Um, I'm just going to let, let, Hey, there's, they're setting something up. Um, last, you said these trees are iron. Are these mm-hmm. trees infernal iron? Roll an investigation check. Oh, I suck at that. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a 12. These particular trees do not appear to be made out of infernal iron. They seem to be some sort of wrought iron making, okay. but nothing of infernal material. All right. My thought look. was that they're here to like harvest these trees or something. Gotcha. Um, for iron, but I don't know why they're here. Mip takes a look at his drove compass that he got off of um, mm-hmm. Smiler. Um doesn't appear to be pointing in their direction uh they are pointing in the compass is pointing in a different direction for the closest warlord okay. and as as they get closer and settle down you hear um what appears to be a human male voice kind of shouting orders you put that tent up over there quickly 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 get the rugs out set up quickly we must be safe tonight and as you stand there, you actually begin to smell spices and the cooking of meats. You hear people laughing. You hear music starting to play. And you realize this is some sort of traveling, probably merchant caravan. Um, I can go and check and see what this is if all of you want to stay here with Lulu um, if it no. looks not think... on your own <laughs> we are not speaking the party no. we're it's just staying down the together. hill it's... and if someone were to quickly snag you we would be none the wiser yeah well, then I'll put a timer on it if I'm not back in three minutes or if you don't see steeple come back in three minutes then you just took a mauling from a giant devil, Aiden. Three minutes could be far too long. Cressida's just going to go... <laughs> How long right. did that take? Not three minutes. I understand your precaution, but at least take Mip with you at the minimum. And Aiden's going to look back at Lulu, remembering that a hell wasp tried to carry her off. Mm -hmm. And no, Mip, you stay here. And Aiden's going to turn and head down the hill. Okay. As you walk down the hill, you hear these voices kind of increase. um, And as you round the corner, um, you see... You see a man dressed in robe, kind of blue and gold robes. He's got a dagger at his waist. He turns and he says, Ah, friend, welcome. Welcome to the Wandering Emporium. Please come and rest. Check our wares. We have quite a bit ready for you. Might I even suggest you check out my wonderful spawn restaurants, the Infernal Rapture, open to you and any of your friends here while we are camped. What do you mean, my friends? What do you mean, friend, period? Do I know you? Oh, no, I am just a traveling merchant. This is the Wandering Emporium. We wander the fields of Avernus and give respite to those who might need it. You offer respite in hell? Of course. 
And you notice so um, he, he, he does have these huge infernal war machines that have formed like a horseshoe around the tents. Um, the curtains are made of small um, rectangular iron plates. There's lamps and um, beads hanging from chains, soft lilting music and amazing smells just coming across the hot winds towards you of food and perfumes and oils and you get the sense that this is this is a he's he's definitely a businessman um and he's got quite a following a few how many am i traveling with well i don't know how many you're traveling with how many are you traveling with Uh, <laughs> helmet off fly back over to them and you're just going to get an image in your head because steeple can't talk of Aiden standing there with this guy in one of his like welcome to the whatever he called this place um, the wandering so emporium get, the wandering emporium you're going to get kind of a little a little series of snapshots of the sign and him and Aiden looking relaxed but confused just as kind of an indication of what's going on. So that's, you can join Aiden if you need to, want to. Um, okay, you, you said friends like you were sort of expecting us. Well, why uh, would you be traveling the wastes of Avernus by yourself? That's not very safe, young man. I, yeah, that's, that's true. I don't know. There's, I, we've met, well, one person traveling the wastes by themselves. Um, but everyone seems to know everyone here. Who are you? My name is Mahdi. Mahdi? I am Mahdi. 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 You can call me okay. Mahadi, Mahadi. Look, the words, the letters, they all come together. <laughs> Whatever you want to call me, Mahadi. M-A-H-A-D-I is how you spell my name. I am the proprietor of the Wandering Emporium. I've gather, gathered these tiny shops and the people with them to, as I said, provide respite to the people in Avernus. We have a spa and a restaurant, which I run and own. There is a uh, ford that is run by three salamanders. We have Bernie the Barber, very wonderful woman. She is quite, quite, uh, quite good at haircuts and whatnot. Um, and then we have um, uh, delivery services um, from here to Avernus, run by imps. Uh, and uh, Amnizu, uh, his name is Fatala. He runs all of our, you know, messaging systems. Uh, and then we have Ickers Away. Uh, it's our mage and magic shop, as well as a lava farm where you can buy and sell uh, lava as needed here in Avernus. Lar what? Who is yes. in the larva trading business? That's Zeneth. He is our hobgoblin. Have you guys joined Aiden yet? Not yet. Yeah, we'll we be like walking down the hill. Um, I'd like to talk to Lulu. We can't really leave her. Oh, Lulu yeah. would be I with you. Was... Lulu would oh, be coming with you. Yeah, she would be yeah. following you. Yeah, in which case, yeah. If she doesn't need any um, encouraging, yeah. And as Lulu turns the corner, um, The sights and the sounds and the smells are very familiar to her, and she realizes she knows Mahadi and other things there in the Emporium, but she doesn't remember why or how she knows them. When Mahadi sees Lulu, he smiles and he welcomes her. Lulu! It has been a long time since I've seen you, dear friend. Welcome back. How sincere is that? Mahadi's a human, right? 
are you Does roll a roll a perception like a check. He looks human. Okay. All right. He looks okay. human. Uh perception three. Uh. <laughs> he looks human. Alright. How sincere do we think his statement of friend was that? Oh, he was very sincere. He knows who Lulu is. I'm not I'm not even gonna make you roll for that. Okay. Okay. But Lulu vaguely remembers him but does not have any solid memories about him. Lulu, if you don't remember details, do you remember impressions? Do you remember emotions? Is this is this a, a welcome memory? Is this a regretful or a painful or a scary memory? The only memory? thing I remember is being sheltered here. I've, I've stayed That's here before. Fine. Okay. All right. Um... Well, if it's good enough for the little angel elephant, <laughs> it's good enough for us. I don't know about you guys, but I'm starving, and whatever that fragrance is, is incredible. All right. Mahadi, where would you recommend that we eat amongst this establishment? Well, I highly recommend the Infernal uh, Rapture, which is a spa and restaurant. We can provide you with a full meal for one soul coin, and the menu is quite delicious. I will provide. Do uh, do any of you read Infernal? No. I <laughs> do. Yes. Mm, okay, I'm going to send this to Kate, so Kate will be able to review the menu here and tell you what is on the menu for uh, the Infernal Rapture. I'm going to send this to Kate. Do, 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 do. There we go. The rest of you, I'm going to send you what this menu looks like in Infernal. <laughs> so that you can all see that as well. So that is in the regular campaign chat. That is what the menu looks like to all of you. However, Kate and I believe Piper could also read the menu as well. Mm -hmm. Please peruse the menu. Uh, take a seat wherever you'd like and we will bring out your dinner, your meal to you. Uh, just one inquiry, Mahadi. As we are traveling, and I'll be quite frank, on a shoestring budget, if we were to buy meals for our entire party, but share, would we be able to get some sort of discount so we're not running a soul coin each hmm. i will provide uh, your entire party a meal a full meal that you can share for three soul coins total got three that sounds spectacular thank you fantastic and he claps a few times and um magically in front of you another tent rises up and um it's a beautiful kind of purple and gold tent um it's oddly cooler inside this tent than it is outside um a table comes uh up from the ground in front of you as well as some stools um very uh elegantly decorated bottles of wine and water um and ale and then any kind of food that you would want all you have to do is order from the menu and it will appear magically on the table for you Aiden's looking at the menu thinking, like, if I recite any of this, the furniture's going to start to levitate, so I'm <laughs> not saying nothing. Uh, but I'll hand over the three soul coins. All right. Um, and then, Kate, do you want to go ahead and share what is on the menu, or is Cressida? So she's sitting there, and she's reading over it. She's like, well, this is an interesting insight as to how everyone eats in a Venice, don't you think? And she'll, like, look around at the blank faces. Ah, right. Um, so for appetizers, we have a pickled vine blight salad, pan-fried myconid cap with garlic butter, spicy shredded sturge sliders. For our mains, we have broiled quippers served in a pork reduction. That's quite lovely. Uh, roasted werebore seasoned liberally with pepper and paprika. Twice battered axe big strips with brandied plum sauce. This one, 
is not to my taste, but no judgment for anyone at the table that would like to partake. Deep fried miniature giant hamster, seasoned to perfection with rosemary, basil, thyme, and tears. Um, and then for dessert, there is a candied phase spider eyes and a raspberry liqueur reduction. A sweet apple tart with the celestial caramel drizzle. Rare miniature stench. None cheese selection. And then coffee and uh, tea. And then, uh, yes, coffee My and heart tea. says. As well as, um, I'm assuming, port, as they are using it in a reduction. Does any of that, do you think, is vegetarian? Well... The vine blight salad, maybe. Mm. Vine blight salad. Um, the myconid caps would be vegetarian, young Heron gone. I mean, technically speaking. As as well as um, it, I, it's technically a dessert, but the cow cheese selection, um, might perhaps you know think charcuterie perhaps with uh, and she's gonna like look back at. Mahadi, like she's not making this up with crackers and the like. Oh, yes. Uh, like I said, our vegetarian selections are the pickled vine blight salad. Technically speaking, the myconid caps are, as well as um, our sweet apple tart and the cheese would be considered vegetarian. Not vegan, of course, but vegetarian. Aiden's going to try and go through the menu again and think of all of the things that he could order that sentient mm. uh, <laughs> and start with the sturge sliders that was an appetizer right mm -hmm. um, the fried axe and the sweet apple tart for desserts and so as what what's interesting is all of these plates just begin to appear in front of all of you it's almost like his, he's making it appear as like some sort of family style buffet where every plate is there you all get to choose and select what you would like all of the options are there at the table ready for you to partake kind of like a family style restaurant where they just bring out huge plates for you all right now when you're finished here you'll be feeling so much better um if you would like something just rammed into my house hopefully that was just a pine cone falling on the on the oh roof God. it was very loud um we also have a lovely uh spa here spa services light uh body foot and hand treatments massage therapy skin care general grooming and bathing if you so wish um they are included with a standard dining menu at no extra cost to you um we all also offer dream therapy or whole body restoration longevity th longevity therapy as well as a host of services for every appetite both wholesome and degenerate um those services do cost an extra soul coin but we do make sure that uh, you are fully prepared to go back out into the wastes of avernus after you're completed and like i said we also have our forge uh, we have our barber who is quite good um, we have our services of delivery and messaging we have our magic shop as well as the lava farm for you to explore this evening should you so wish and you're more than welcome to also camp with us for the evening if you need a place to rest uh, after your meals and spa services or any shopping you might do. Thank you very much, Mahadi. That's cool. very generous of you. Enjoy your meal. And he kind of gives you all a low bow and then goes back into another tent, um, which appears to be where many of the spa services are in another tent back behind him. Do enjoy your meal, he calls as he waves. Like, this is weird, right? Like, this isn't just me being suspicious. Normally, I'm pretty. This is this this place is this is like a weird thing, right? Not just me. It, it's bizarre, but I would liken it to the traveling circus that used to come just outside Baldur's Gate, doing all sorts of oddities and markets and what have you. It's just a different landscape. And Lula what goes, you mean is that you're not expecting revelry to be in hell? 
Avernus is just weird, period. And Lula reaches out for a piece of apple and pops it into her mouth. Crunch, not, not, crunch, not, crunch. Even, not even just revelry, hospitality. It's, it, I don't know. I don't know. Aiden's going to kind of feel the scruff. I'm like, oh, I could use a shave. Even in places where people suffer discomfort, there's there's a process to maintain. Even the devils need time off. Well, that and what we know of Avernus is just the horror stories. Obviously, yeah. there's a civilization here in some sort. Avernus as a whole isn't innately evil. There just happens to be a lot of evil contained here. Okay. And Cressida's going to start talking. Talking again. <laughs> yeah. As you all eat this meal, um, you feel this warmth kind of bubble up inside of you. Um, and you all now have the benefits of a hero's feast with the added effect that you have disadvantage on insight checks made against Mahadi. Oh, okay. 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 So you've got the effects of hero's feast, but any insight checks against Mahadi are at disadvantage. Uh, what's that extra hit points? How much? Um, and I think 2d10. Yeah. Do you want me to roll for those or do you guys want to roll? It do seems we... like you should roll. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All get the same amount, 2d10. So. That is six extra hit points. All righty. Is that temporary hit points? Or... Uh, it's, it's a hit point max increases by 2d10 and gains hit the same number max. of hit points. So your max yeah. increases for the next 24 hours. Okay. And as you're sitting there having your meal, you notice um, different kind of people wandering in, imps. You see some salamanders come in and have some food. Um, you see different kind of uh, creatures come in. You're not sure exactly what they are. Um, they definitely look like they have a devilish or fiendish features to them, but you're not quite sure what they are. Um, you do see a a cheerful, very well-kept Kalamshite woman walk in very briefly, um, picks up a couple of things off of a nearby table and takes them back um, to where she um, seems to be residing here in the caravan. Um, but people are kind of coming and going, getting their meals, and then going back to their shops for the evening as well. Kalamshite. Is that this... an area we would know? Is that a, like a... A Kalashite. Um, roll a history check. I thought that though. What is that? That's a nine oops, oops, plus oops, oops. probably nothing. Yep, nine. Okay. So you're Cressida that oh sorry. Go ahead. I was like Cressida got only a thirteen for that one. So you guys you guys know you've heard of the realm of Kalamshan. Um you've never oh. really seen okay. the Kalashites. Mm -hmm. Um they have kind of dusky brown skin, brown hair, brown eyes, a little shorter and slighter build than most other humans. Um, but you do know they, uh, Cressida in particular would know the history of these. Um, they are descendants of the slaves of genies. Um, so they are now a free people um, that after uh, Callum's power dwindled, they were essentially set free to, realm, to roam the realms and, uh, some of them have ended up here uh, with Mahadi. Okay. Kind of a Western Asian analog. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. But the meal is delicious. Um, despite being a bit odd, you do find that it is filling and uh, you do feel that kind of sustenance kind of flow back into you after the effects of being out in Avernus for so long today, as well as the battle that ensued at the end of last session. How much was that? Um... It was three soul <laughs> coins total. Oh, and six hit points. Six, six, hit. six, yeah. 
and Cressida is going to lean forward and kind of like under her breath go, how on earth do you think they get space hamster here? Well, She's just kind of like look around. <laughs> I... He's going to kind of look over the table. Okay, we've got space hamster. That would be from the astral realm. There's not celestial like Maggie caramel. Didn't come from the fave realm, so and she came here by choice, just like Smiler did. As 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 morbid as it seems, meal wise, the the poor hamster. It means they might have some form of interdimensional travel. Yeah. Perhaps there's someone in this camp that might let us know a way home at the end. Or even have some of the ingredients on this list that Mad Maggie provided? Precisely. Maybe the magic shop could have ingredients, yeah. It'd be worth asking around about whether it be for the ingredients from Maggie's list or perhaps they have a chime not unlike what we used yeah. previously. It'd be worth an ask. Okay. For, for that spell, DM, for mm -hmm. uh, whatever, plain shift, it, it, do you need like a... a, a fork like a rod like a tuning thing to get back to your your native plane i believe you i don't remember us getting one when I we went think... to the feywild but no but that was different you had the necklace okay. i believe to get you to the feywild you yeah, do need a metal yeah. rod worth at least 250 gold pieces attuned to a particular plane of existence yeah oh i thought we went to the library and checked out a feywild rod no, we no. got one to, for the material. To get back. Oh, to that's right. Keep. We had that. We had the necklace. Yeah. We had that hag necklace. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. All yep. right. I, my memory sucks. Um, <laughs> no stress. Okay. Uh, is it? I can't feel a little. This feels a little wasteful, spending beasts souls on food like this well now you tell me i don't think that you should view it that way as hard as that is here it would it's viewed as currency the same as we would spend gold at home and on top of that you're giving that soul free agency now it's no longer bound We've if anything, over to someone else is what we've done. But they are either going to use it as currency or to fuel, and she's going to gesture to that horseshoe shape we saw earlier, or to fuel their infernal machines, at which point they're set free. Yeah. Well. It's a hard consensus to make, but we cannot save them all. No. Aiden has a little flashback of that weird voice that he heard a long time ago back in Baldur's Gate that said the same damn thing. You can't save everyone. And he's just going to kind of sit back and like, oh boy, maybe I shouldn't have spent this money. Maybe I... Cressida's going to stretch. Well, after this meal, it was lovely, I'm going to go take full advantage of the spa and actually feel clean for once since sitting foot here in Avernus, uh, and then perhaps convene and head to the magic shop. Okay. I, I would say, I mean, I don't mind the water pressure in the mansion. It, it's perfectly <laughs> fine. You never run out of hot water. It's, it's okay. So don't, yeah. don't she's gonna like oh, hold her hands yeah. up though and she, she was digging through the ash earlier to find that soul coin <laughs> yes but this is becoming a permanent state the second we step outside the mansion 
Okay. We'll have to find you some gloves or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not opposed to it. It's just nice to not have that for a little. All right. All right. So Cressida gets up and goes into um, the spa tent. Cressida, yeah. when you walk in, it's oddly almost like walking into another world. It is a large, elaborate kind of bathhouse. Um, tile floor, very beautifully scented water and oils. Um, there are uh, rooms in the back that each have um, a different kind of uh, body treatment. So massage, scalp, you know, treatments, hand massage, full body massages that are kind of available throughout that room um, as part of your meal. And then any of those bigger treatments would be an extra soul coin, the dream therapy, the whole body restoration, things like that, um, if you so need, would be that additional soul coin service fee. She will gesture to the like scalp one and be like, if I'm doing this, can someone also take care of this at the same time? Oh yes, we can definitely do that. Please take a seat and we will make sure that you are properly taken care of after your meal here. And it's, um, Thank you so very much. there's a human woman, <laughs> um, as well as appears to be like a halfling, um, who is there with a, a hand kind of manicure kind of setup as well. She'll thank them like both and kind of follow them to okay. where she's supposed to be. And they settle you down and they have like beautiful scented oils for your hair. They have um, wonderful just soaps and lotions for your hands. Um, and they take very good care of you and clean you up quite, quite well here. So as she's sitting there um, doing this, she's going to do what everyone does when they go to the nail parlor and see if she can find some tea. <laughs> so... Tell me a little bit about your troop. This is very unexpected. Well, this is the Wandering Emporium. We travel with Mahadi. He provides protection for us from Avernus and its denizens in exchange for us providing services for his customers. Spectacular. He seems an interesting individual, oh, Mahadi. He is a very interesting individual. He's been here for quite some time. Uh, he he's very charismatic he's a gracious host and he does take very good care of us catering to every woman desire of everybody who enters anybody who enters the establishment is under a special contract protected while they're here that sounds incredible I'm curious, and please don't take this the wrong way, but with how harsh a Vernus is, how do you all avoid exhaustion? Oh, it's the magic. Um, Mahadi is very powerful and is able to keep the exhaustion off of us somehow. I don't know how. I don't question it. That's valid. We do have magic users in our party. Do you think this is a trait that Mahadi has, or perhaps it could be a spell that he could teach one of us? Um, he might be able to. I'm not sure. I do know he gets his power from elsewhere. I'm not sure who, what, but he is quite powerful. He might be oh, willing to teach you. Fair enough. When you say power from elsewhere, do you mean similar to like a warlock pack or something like that? Somewhat, but I don't believe he's a warlock. And Cressida's going to lean in with a big smile across her face. Oh, I'm intrigued. What do you think he is? Roll, roll, mm, roll persuasion. Twenty-five. I only roll a five. Oh, well, we <laughs> know right. what Mahadi is. He's a Rakshasa. Mm -hmm. Rakshasa. Is that, <laughs> Rakshasa. Rakshasa. Is, is that is that common in Avernus? I oh, have... that's very common here in Avernus. Okay. Um, forgive me, being from the material plane. There's a lot of this stuff that I'm unfamiliar with. Oh, that's quite is that all right. Anything else within Avernus or this camp in particular that you feel that I should know? Hmm. 
Just make sure you pay your bill before you leave. If you have any outstanding bill and try to leave, Mahari will not be very happy about that. Oh, understandable. No one wants to be left hanging when finding you was such a luck in the first place. Quite right. But he's very generous and takes good care of his customers while they're here. Beautiful. Thank you so very much. Of course. You are doing such a spectacular job. Oh, thank you. And the little halfling just kind of scrubs a little bit more to get the, the extra ash and dirt out from under your nails. <laughs> All right. Aiden, Mip, what would you like to do? Um. I've been... Oops. I asked... Well, I learned a little bit about the Helm of Torn. I learned, what? Well, I... I had the library um, give me some information on demon possession and... Oh, okay. A little bit of information on the Helm of Torn. It's it's not that you're any better or any worse than Raven God. It's more a matter of who you're faithful with, it sounds. Oh, you're saying this to Aiden? Yes, to Aiden. Oh, I thought we had like all <laughs> split up and gone different directions. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that's right i i i think that helmet is some kind of divine implement yeah. and you need a level of divinity or at least fortitude to handle it i mean the, that the information i found in the library suggested that it was more to do with who you were um, oath to, I guess, who you you needed to be more. You needed to have Torm. The book essentially said that yeah. you had to be a follower of Torm in able in order to be able to attempt to use this yeah. helmet. That's what the book need, said. You needed to be a, um, a devotee of Torm. It, that's the only re only problem with it. So, I still couldn't use no. it, nor would I want to try. No, no, I just... I don't even know if Duke Ravenguard was. No, I... It's just the last time we talked. I didn't want you thinking that... I felt... It felt insensitive, what I said before. About the helmet or about the other stuff? Other stuff and saying you're no better than Raven Guard. Raven Guard's a good man, right? He's a worthy leader of the fists. Trust me, if I'm not a fan of being a fist, but it's not on his account. Just don't count yourself short, I guess. I didn't think I was. I just felt like I implied I just... you had you were and I didn't like that. No, I just Mip, I think I understand my place in the world. And I don't think I'm at the level of interfering with the relics of other gods. I, I it, it, whatever. You, the helmet thing was no problem. Okay. I, That dream that we were shown. When. Mm. 
then we will give them the option of killing or um, having those devils serve us. Oh, Lulu's memories. Yeah. I can't help but feel you managed to get past that sludge on your own merit. The others with the help of the devils Mm -hmm. And I didn't. I don't know if it was my own merit. I I kind of have a whole uh, I don't want to say I have a whole power structure behind me because they're not behind me, they're above me. That was... It made me think that maybe if I had something like that behind me too, then I wouldn't be suffer wouldn't suffer in the same way. I'm just fearful. You you mean if you found some kind of faith you wouldn't be as anxious, as as trepidatious as you are? Is that what you're saying? You're you're No. Okay. Because you don't need a a god or a belief structure for courage man like it, it... not courage i'm fearful that what i am isn't enough to survive this place and why if you and what it takes to survive this place is to either be sponsored like you are or Sponsored by the devils around us. That's what I took from that memory. Oh. In a way, you sort of are sponsored now in a very limited sense, but do you feel as if you have to sell your soul to survive this place? Or you have to it's more I'm worried about. I and think why... maybe you're projecting your fear onto me. You're worried about you think you're not enough. And yet the only person who thinks that is you. If you can look back on everything that you've done, escaping a manipulative oppressive system deciding on your own to make a better life and then finding a means to do it if if all of that means that little to you then what are you doing here why did you if, if i suppose this gets to the heart of the matter but why did you come with us You wanted to return that necklace. And instead, you went in the opposite direction and dove down into hell. Someone who does that without assurance in their abilities, without confidence in themselves, is a real enigma. Mm. I don't think you're as afraid as you feel you are. I, I, shield, I don't it understand it. points me... 
I could run any time. I did run. Mm -hmm. And while I did escape, I left behind my father and my family. So did That's... I. So did Cressida. You ran away from one thing, sure, but... And if I run again, you... then that's what I'm going to do again. Mip, look at everything you've run towards. You've run towards the greater good every time, and yet you keep browbeating yourself for doing the better of two bad options. You ran away from the drove so that you could be strong enough to break that wheel. You ran away from breaking that wheel so that you could save an entire city. Right? I mean, we, we know not all of us are down here to help El Terrell, but I had presumed that at least most of us were. So... I don't... I could turn away from this, but it would just mean not having... It would mean being alone again. That's why I'm still here. I don't remember where this conversation started, Mip, but <laughs> I think I've settled on a piece of advice I can give you. I, I I don't know if you're open to hear it, but you need to f remember that you're fighting for something. If you spend every minute of every day worried about all of the negative repercussions of the good things that you've done, then you're just talking yourself out of doing the right thing. There have been plenty of things that I've done that you've been there for. Things that I thought were good that quite literally blew up in my face. I tried to save Amrit. And I marched him to his death in the streets. I tried to avenge Amrick. And I brought Thirstwell right back here. I marched us down into those catacombs to find Thavius. And we were all treated to a wonderful spectacle of him opening his throat while he was praying to that fucking shield. Yeah. There's plenty of things that we've done that have been good. Don't let the perfect be the enemy of that. You're not perfect. Neither am I. None of us are. No, I guess not. So make a list. Then. You're going to take down Three of these warlords. That's going to yeah. help Smiler. Smiler helps Maggie. Yeah. Maggie helps the other survivors. Yeah. You get out of here, hopefully after having helped Zariel and the people of Avernus. And then you take down the drove. And that helps untold numbers more. Yeah. It does that makes sense. But just because we don't know the consequences of our good intentions doesn't mean we shouldn't be mindful. What could go wrong? 
sure we need to be mindful but and there's one thing that we maybe should be mindful of right now What's that? he He's was dead. a companion of Zariel was he How much attention do you think that will have gone at Zahariel? Probably plenty. But if you think we're better off having left him no. alive, no, then no. The good that we do is always going to have ripples. That's the point. Yeah. You do as much as you can to help as many as you can as much as you can. That's all you can do. That's all I've ever tried to do. But maybe we can't not do the good, but we need to be careful of what comes back at us afterwards. Are you implying that we're not being careful? I'm I'm confused, Mip, as to what what's the what what we're doing I, our best. If that I isn't good we, enough, then we need to know no, you, we asking, need your guidance here. What are you asking? I'm asking what do you think we should be doing about that if we have drawn attention? The same thing we've been doing. The same thing I've been trying to do, at least, since we got here. As good as we can, as much as we can. Okay. Lulu's been kind of sitting there listening to this conversation. And she says to both of you, Avernus will prey on your insecurities and your fears. You can't let you can't let this place influence whatever good you think you're going to do. Do it. The gods watch even here. If they see gods you doing good got enough of their eyes on us. If they see you doing good Tell no. Even here. Thank you, Lulu. And then Lulu gets up from the table and she goes into, appears to go into the bathhouse to join Cressida. Take a bath. Aiden's going to get up if Mip is in his contemplative state as it looks like Vin is. <laughs> and head toward <laughs> head toward the barbershop. Okay. Um, so we'll go here for Aiden. Um, Aiden, you go into a place. Um, my camera just went woo. Uh, hello, focus. There we go. Um, You're good. You go into this um, this kind of red and kind of oranges burnished brown kind of colored tent. Um, and you see, like a, like I mentioned, this Kalamshite woman, or Kalashite woman, her name is Bernie, um, and she welcomes you in. She's very, like, very cheerful for being in Avernus, um, and she, she welcomes you in. Oh, come in, come in, come in. And Hi. you Hi. see when she looks at you, her affect changes just briefly. And I need you to roll either insight or perception. Your choice. I'm third insight. Uh, yes, there's one time on the dice. Which dice do you guys use this one? Uh, that is a 13 plus 3. That's a 16. When you look at her, your vision becomes somewhat hazy. And her shape begins to kind of shift and grow. And you see behind her, in front of her, a giant 
ancient copper dragon in this woman's visage and then you briefly your vision sharpens again and she is herself but she is smiling we've been waiting for uh. you and she snaps her finger and all of a sudden the room changes you can feel like there's almost like a shield around this space okay we need to chat please take a seat And while you take a seat in her chair, she begins kind of pre preparing to, like, give you a shave and a, and a, and a trim. Um, uh, oh, do I have, like, control over my... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Faculty? Yes, okay. you do. Yeah. You're here because of him as well. Who, who's you, we? Who's him? You know who, who he is. He sent me here to keep an eye out for signs of increased activity amongst her followers. If you mean him. Oh, I mean him. Then you mean her. And I mean her. I'm like fucking shaking right now. Holy shit. Okay. Uh. <laughs> After the last time the queen tried to escape the nine hills, those of us who oppose her are taking no chances. She cannot escape again. What if she didn't have to? That's what I'm here to chat about. What exactly is your plan? And Aiden's gonna lay back in this in this barber chair. And I suppose in Draconic he's gonna lay all this out, just in case I don't know what this bubble is that we're in, but our Lord gave me a directive protect them and I'm sure you either through him or through your own know of what's happened in El Terrell. and the fact that it seems that one way or another a change of leadership here in Avernus is needed now I personally think that everything that we've learned with Zariel being brought down here and abandoned and betrayed that I mean she was forced into compliance with Asmodeus so I think there's a way to get her out of here without slaying her but regardless that's going to leave a power vacuum here in Avernus will it? You don't think Asmodeus will just put Bell back into charge? I don't want to give him the chance. Have you thought if... of all of the consequences that might happen should she take the reins here? I don't think it's possible for me to comprehend everything that could happen. But With her on the throne of Avernus, we would have a true deity in Asmodeus's domain. Not one of these archduke devils that he could order around, but a true goddess. One that could draw the chromatics to her, the dragon cults, all of the kobold followers, any draconic scourge on the material plane. And what does that do for the blood war? 
Does that, that affect turns... the balance? Well. The Hells are already outnumbered by the Abyss. It's a simple numbers game. There's nine Hells. There's 999 levels to the Abyss. But. Having a goddess here with the command of every evil draconic asset across two planes drawn to her would helps help make safe the material plane it would in my opinion scratch her itch she's a creator the two of them made the universe together and she raged when she lost it last time, giving her back something, a foothold to call her own, something to bring her, I suppose, grandchildren in, in a certain sense together under her. I think it would do more good than harm. I know some of the devils here have allegiance to her. I know about the Abishai. And at the end of the day, if she's fighting to repel the demons, then ultimately she's doing what Asmodeus would want, but on her own terms. We keep Asmodeus I hate to say it, but happy. We help restore some of what she lost. And we help safeguard this realm as well as my own. Balance. It's not perfect, but I think it brings brother and sister a little closer together. And I think that's what he wants. You wish to restore the order, correct? Word travels fast. Yes. I do. I had wondered a lot about the order. I thought I would... I thought I would find more. I... I I've been distracted lately, but yes, I want to restore the order. You must find balance if you are to do that. And to walk between the two in balance is a very hard thing to do. Keep that in mind. But he does approve of your philosophy. And he sees no harm in trying. And as she um, is working on shaving your face and kind of cleaning you up, giving you a haircut, um, you are good aligned, correct? Yes. You are fully healed from any injuries that you have uh, taken on um, as you are cleaned up and shaved and given a haircut. And she snaps her fingers again and the walls drop this kind of shell of protection. She pulls, she reaches into her pocket and pulls out a small copper coin um, with a copper dragon on it. This is only to be used in dire need. It will call me and once, only once, I can take you to Bahamut. And she places it in your hand only once.
You're good to go. Aiden of the Platinum Dragon. And she kind of shakes her little, like, apron that she put over you while she was cleaning you up. I... Aiden is fighting the urge to hug this woman. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, I'm going for it. I'm okay. gonna like And she hugs you back in and just like Yeah, she hugs you back. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. <laughs> right. And he just walks out just white knuckling this coin just okay. Cressida we'll go back to you very briefly um, as you're sitting on the chair you do see Lulu come into the bathhouse and she kind of looks around and just you watch her just kind of go to one of the hot tubs or the baths and just kind of sink into it very slowly <laughs> but her little tusk just comes up above like this and you just go you hear her sigh She's just sitting in this <laughs> hot tub of water. And Chris had watched her come in and do this. Um, <laughs> Mip, we've got a few minutes before we take a break. What would you like to do this evening as you're here in the Wandering Emporium? Um, I guess take a look around that magic. Like, okay. um... Sure. So you go um, to another tent this one is oddly black and gold and purples it's again very rich colors um you smell it like an incense coming from inside the tent um and when you walk in you see a, a human um and he's behind him he's got shelves full of this kind of black ichor um in bottles um he you notice that this man is very odd looking um his arms have have become tentacles with fingers at the end, um, very long reach. His ears have sprouted wings and uh, he appears to be deaf because these wings are always flapping now. He relies on lip reading and hand gestures to communicate, you notice, as he's talking to another customer there. Um, but he is there and he has um, what appears to just be bottles and bottles and bottles of this demon ichor. Um, on his shelves. Um. Hello. Hello, young bit. Come forward. Yes, I know um, your name. I'm very smart. Might I interest you in some ichor? It's quite powerful. Um. Powerful how? Well, it's sticky enough to adhere to most weapons. Um, when a demon falls, we collect it. Um, uh, there are various um, effects it could have when it strikes a creature, um, just depending on how well and how deep you strike. I guess piercing weapons might be quite effective with that. Oh, thing. very, very. Is this everything that you sell here? Is it only this Ica? This is all I have for sale, yes. Okay. What it is my effects? speciality. Oh, well, it really just depends. I mean, sometimes it will just change the color of the hair of the target or eyes or skin. Uh, sometimes uh, the targets will uh, grow claw hands. I've seen um, targets triple their weight, uh, double in size. I've seen them become vulnerable to other types of damage and even have advantage on certain attacks. It really just depends on what's rolled. You can't be sure of what will happen with any one piece of icon. No, it is random. Okay. 
Um, you, you're obviously concerned with the production of these or harvest of these? Well, when we encounter a demon who is particularly nasty, we tend to take it out and then we collect the ichor from what is left. Who's we? Well, the Emporium. Mahadi has several uh, employees who help around the Emporium, different tasks as we need them. How do you go about how do they go about extracting the cycle? Oh, you have to be very careful. Uh, you can siphon it, you can spoon it. Um, you don't want to touch the demon acre, that's for sure. But they're very careful when they harvest it. Spoons or siphons, whatever works best for them. Spoons and siphons. You don't have these implements? Oh, we do. I do as well, yes. Okay. The Ica is available for, um, let me find the prizes, 100 gold pieces per flask. I will also buy Ica from you um, at 50 gold pieces per flask, if you happen to have it on you. You sell the implements to extract it? I can definitely sell you a siphon and some empty flasks. How much would those be? Hmm. Ten gold pieces per flask, and then a siphon for fifteen gold pieces. Um, ten gold pieces per flask and a siphon for fifteen. Yes. I'll take um, a siphon and three flasks. Right. He opens a drawer behind his kind of table and he pulls out a small um, leather pouch that appears to have um, a glass siphon along with some kind of rubber bulb at the tip so that you don't have to actually touch the ichor when you siphon it up. It's basically like a glorified a glass baster. turkey baster. <laughs> um, and then he also hands over um, three small flasks about this size um, to you to return to him should you encounter the Emporium again. Thank you. you ever watched Ed, Ed, and Eddie? Those are called Canadian squirt guns. <laughs> <laughs> Turkey Meister. Because they didn't know what they were, so they... <laughs> I love it. Um, would you be able to point me in the direction of the people that you have here who regularly collect this stuff, if you don't, yourself? They're all around, and I do help as well. Uh, just ask around. They're, everybody helps everybody else here, and we just kind of rotate and go through it. Okay. And actually, um, as you say this, you see um, uh, a small goblin woman walk in, and she's um, she's also got some like what appear to be mutations. And you you kind of put two and two together that you can tell she's got these mutations because she has touched the demon icker um, at some point during collection. Right. Do be okay. careful; it is quite potent. Do you have any protective gear to prevent such accidents? I don't. However, they may have someone, Fatala may, uh, not Fatala, uh, the Forge may have some armor that might be helpful to you. Okay. Thank you. Um, of course. Right. 
Uh, I'll head to the forge next then. Okay. Um, and we're going to take a quick break there um, because it is our break time. So we're going to take a quick 10 minute break, guys. We'll be back. We'll head to the Fire Snake Forge next to see what they've got with the salamanders. So stay tuned. We'll be back in about 10 minutes. See you then. <laughs> Hold on. We're going to go to the BRB scene. Woo! There we go. Burb. <laughs> Music. Burb.
Hi guys, we're back from our break. I'm gonna turn down this music very slowly so it's not too abrupt and scares everybody. Uh, welcome back everyone. We are gonna jump back here into our game. I just gotta get my notes pulled up. There we go. All right, so Mip, you were going to head to Fire Snake Forge next. Yes. Um, when you rush in uh, to this tent, you see three salamanders and they're all kind of like skittering about and talking to each other. Um, but you do see they have uh, quite a forge here. Um, and essentially they can make or sell any kind of metal or, or any kind of metal armor or weapons that are in chapter five of the player's handbook. So if you guys want anything specifically from them, um, they do have it. However, it is marked up 150%. Just as a heads up for prices, um, but they're there and they welcome you in. And ah, yes, welcome, Mr. Herringon. We don't see many like you here, but we have quite a shop. If there's anything you would like, um, I've been informed of. Siphoning Ikor from Devils? Yes! I've noticed that there's certain ill effects that can happen from getting mm, it yes. on you. Yes, an option if you're not very careful when you siphon it. Uh, if you get some on you or in you in a wound, it could uh, have an effect. Do you have anything that could help with preventing Michael hmm. from getting on us? Let me think. And um, this one in particular, his name is Rash. Rash. There's two S's. R-A-S-S-H. Um, give me just one moment. Skids. Slag. Watch the shop. And Rash runs off behind um, this kind of curtain and you hear kind of things being thrown around and rustling and um, about two minutes later he comes back out and he goes I believe this might help uh, somewhat and it seems to be um, like a mask that just covers the nose and the mouth um, this is made out of demon skin however it will provide extra protection to the wear when they Work with Demon Ikur. Okay. How many of these do you have available? Uh, I currently have two, and they are 500 gold pieces each. 500 gold pieces each? Yes. Only the, two, only the two. Only the two right now. We may get more in. It just depends on how many demons we encounter. How are these made? Oh. Well, Unfortunately, we skin the demon and then we have it sewn into a material and it helps provide a little extra protection when siphoning demon eker. Demon eker. Any particular type of demon? They're all the same. Oh, the masks? Uh, just depends on what kind of demon we encounter. So you can make these masks out of any kind any of demon? Any demon, yes. Okay. I'll take those two uh, masks off of you. That would be 1,000 gold pieces. And he slides over the two masks to you. And they, they essentially look, when you kind of pick them up and get a closer look, they look like the cover of the Necronomicon from Evil Dead. <laughs> oh, hell. They are <laughs> gruesome. Um, but they will provide a plus three to any saves that you have to make when handling Demon Icker. And we will just call them Demon Icker masks. That's just a homebrew thing I come up, came up with just right now, guys. So <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> weren't expecting me to ask how to actually do uh, I was not, but it myself. Hey, it's a good thing so, I'm good with, like, coming up with stuff on the fly. fly. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you purchase those, and of course, like I said, there are anything that's in the player's handbook of Chapter 5, 
they have for sale is just 150% markup in cost. Okay. Um, we've been, where do you guys get your materials from? Oh, much of it's imported. We can find any materials here that you would find in the material plane. Um, Sometimes it's just a bit harder to find, which is why we mark up the prices. Yeah. You import it? Who are your... Well, other um, travelers will bring us materials, uh, items they no longer want, they will sell. Sometimes we refurbish them, sometimes we sell them as is. It really just depends. Often we'll melt things down and make new items. So, it's... Do you have regular suppliers? Mm, I wouldn't so much say regular suppliers. We do occasionally see the same customers over and over again uh, here in Avernus, but mm, regular suppliers? No. It's really just who we encounter and what they have on them. What they're willing to part with, so to speak. Okay. Thank you. Um, you do have some people that you do encounter more often. Oh, you, yes. Would you happen to know or be able to tell me who those people are? Oh, we don't know their names. Uh, they don't share the names with us. We just happen to encounter them from time to time. Okay. Thank you. Of course. Um, I then... Um, lead to return back to that um um magic shop with, okay because uh, i i got a little sidetracked <laughs> <laughs> no worries <laughs> okay go back to the magic shop um, i asked the what's the i asked the I didn't get the name of the... Um... His name is Eliak. Eliak. You knew my name before I walked in. Yes. How did you know that name? I know the name of everyone who walks into the shop. It is just a skill I have. Um... Do I think that's true? Roll an insight that check. Sounds a little far far fetched. Um, terrible. <laughs> uh, nine. You get the sense he's telling the truth. He's okay. being honest. He, when these people walk in, he just seems to know their name. the only thing that I was actually worried about afterwards. Um... Roll. Roll another insight check. One more. Huh? Uh, that's a lot better. 24. You look at Eliac and then you look at all of the demon Icker and you kind of look at the various mutations he has and you realize that this power might actually become be coming from the demon icker itself and part of the mutate one of the mutations he has in coming in contact with it so often gotcha so it's semi natural mm -hmm. if unnatural in origin it's natural to him yes okay um i've obtained some masks to help Reduce the risk. Oh, that's good. Um, we've fought some devils up to this point. We haven't made a point of trying to or do anything with their icor up to this point. What's been the... 
our blades have obviously been um have you fought demons or have you fought devils we fought devils and it's devil icor this is demon icor so this is you would only have encountered this if you fight a demon up. yeah it's right. essentially demon blood demon blood gotcha so it's we haven't fought demons up to this point mm -hmm. we fought devils but not demons yes. gotcha um oh, i thought okay. we had fought some we fought some demons in the streets of Eltor. You might have fought some demons in the streets of Eltor. So this this is kind of a black liquid that oozed, that comes mm. from them. Um, you, Eliak will inform you that there are enough demons that have died in Avernus that you may occasionally encounter pools or small lakes of demon ichor as well. Small lakes? Yes. Wow. All right. No random swimming no yeah. random swimming i have a swim speed but my god don't swim in a burn just... swim speed <laughs> yeah i have a swim speed now <laughs> okay <laughs> no swimming in a burnus. please don't it's gross what <laughs> it's gross uh incredibly hazardous almost as bad as swimming in the uh, rivers in the uk at this moment in time um <laughs> gross this is yeah. why they didn't do the uh the swimming stuff in France, because <laughs> actually they did. And oh, they, they did. Sick, right? Oh shit, they did. Yeah. Oh, bad, bad idea. Don't don't swim yeah. in poo lakes or poo, poo rivers. Just don't do it. There was I, I heard some story about an athlete who was trying to like mithridate with E. coli to like build up his body's oh. resistance to it ahead of time. Because he's like, I don't wow. think they're going to be able to get the water safe enough. So he was like micro-dosing E. coli for like That's weeks don't, don't swim ahead in the of the Zen game. Or the Thames, guys. It's just gross. Just, yeah. just gross. Ugh. Yeah, so Iliac kind of informs you that you can naturally happen upon Demon Icker because there have been so many demon deaths. But usually it's easiest to find after killing a demon. Okay. Um, thank you. Of course. I guess I... The last place I saw um, anyone specific going was to the bathhouse. So... You saw Cresta uh, and, yeah, yeah Lulu well, head into the bathhouse. Lulu, yeah. Lulu, yep. So I'll head that direction. Okay. And, Aiden, uh, yeah. okay. Aiden, what would you like to do um, as well once you leave uh, the barber shop? So there is this magic shop that only sells the demon ichor. There's mm -hmm. the forge that just sells marked up mundane stuff. Mm -hmm. um, has anyone gone to this larva farm yet? No, yeah. So. Um, I honestly, you know, in, in character, Aiden would be in such like a elated fugue state that he would just wander and yeah um <laughs> i don't really have an idea of of what else to do let's let's just take some notes i take an awful lot of notes thing <laughs> with those um <laughs> i'm actually going to thinking about okay we've got this thing i have this this celestial boon that would jog Ava's memory he's gonna go and try and find is it Mahadi or Mahadi. is it Mahdi? Like Mahadi. From Dune. You could okay. either way. It's gonna he he will respond to either. Okay. All right. So if if yeah, because Mahdi was was Paul. Mm -hmm. um, in Dune. He, that was that was, <laughs> that was Messiah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mahdi. We, we like Dune just a little bit. So. <laughs> um, I'm going. Yeah, I'm going to try and find Mahadi and. Okay ask if he's run into other wanderers okay. in Avernus. If, if he's got any details, we're looking for Piper's mom. We're looking for mm -hmm. Gressida's dad. I mean, has he seen... Okay. I don't know at all what Piper's mom looks like, but I know to describe mm -hmm. 
so Madi is, is in the restaurant, <laughs> so to speak, at this time, and he's kind of having brief conversations with people who are coming in and going. Uh, but he sees you enter and make eye contact, and he motions you over. Please sit down. Would you like some tea or coffee? Um, tea, please. All right. And he snaps his fingers, and you see um, a little um, goblin... Uh, boy, man, you're not sure if he's he's an adult or not, kind of run over with a large teapot and pours um, you both um, this almost peppermint smelling tea in a beautiful kind Ooh. of ornate gold um, filigree glass. Please, please. What can I do for you? I I wondered if you knew um, or, or, or had encountered anyone else wandering oh, Avernus. We encounter many. Uh, men, women, children, lost souls wandering. Uh, we provide all of them a place to rest, as needed. They are granted protection while they are here from any potential enemies. Uh, Anyone the woman with you're wing? traveling with. There's a man mm -hmm. who comes frequently. Looks very much like her. He's not when here now. He here? Uh, perhaps three days ago? We saw him last. He does appear mm -hmm. from time to time. Just swoops down from the sky. Has a bit to eat. Cleans himself up and Gumu's on his way. Does he ever trade for anything? Does he ever bring anything? Bring anyone? No. He always comes alone. He's fairly well armored and well kitted out. He doesn't trade much other than for food and the bathhouses. He speaks with uh, the barber quite frequently. But I believe they are both more on the up and up than other inhabitants of the Wandering Emporium. I think you know what I mean. What direction does he come from? Where does he go? It varies each time. Sometimes he comes from the east and heads west. Sometimes he comes from the west and heads north. He doesn't tell anybody much of anything. Except for Bernie. Except for Bernie. Thank you. For of the course. Tea. Um, and I will sit as long as is polite to finish my tea and mm -hmm. then go and talk to Bernie, see if okay. she's got any info. Aiden, welcome back. I... Mahadi tells me that you regularly speak to a man with burned wings. She smiles. Yes. We're looking for him. Why are you looking for him? Make sure nobody else is around to lean in. He's Cressida's father. Cressida. Do you know your father's name? No. My mother has a hard time talking about him. Okay. So she's never, ever referred to him by his name. Okay. It was always with affections. My love, your father. Okay. Give me one moment. Mm, of course. Ellen comes here frequently. Well, more frequently than others. 
He is not a follower of Bahamut. He has fallen. But he is still good. He does what he can here to help protect and save the souls who have come to Avernus. I do know that the city that has fallen recently, he has been trying to protect. Do you know? Does he? Does he have a, a, a camp somewhere? Is he? Is he ensconced? Is he? Is he? I don't believe settled? he's settled anywhere. I believe he goes from place to place, finds shelter where he can, when he can. We see him here every once in a while, before he leaves and heads back into the wastes of Avernus. And and he was just recently here. How, how often does he? Is it the last monthly? time we've seen him th was three days ago. He, mm -hmm. we see him perhaps, maybe two or three times a week, if that. He's quite frequent. He comes. He takes the feast. Every 24 hours, he's good for that. And then he departs for several days and returns again. His name is Elin. Oh. E apostrophe L-I-N. How long do you think the Emporium will be here? We will be departing in the morning. We camp every night, but then we move on. I will tell you, Aiden, he is aware of his daughter, but he wishes to keep her protected. So do I. Does that mean protected from him? Not necessarily. But he does have a contract that is currently being fulfilled. And he hopes one day to return to the material plane. Do you know any details about this contract? I do know that Who an arch devil holds it by the name of Julius. Has he ever indicated any hints about what he needs accomplished? He is supposed to deliver a number of souls to Julius before his contract is up. Elin will only deliver evil souls to Julius. He does not deliver good souls, despite that it being what Julius mostly wants. But he fights against that and only delivers the souls of evil creatures to him instead. It will take him longer to fulfill his contract, but he is working on it. In the form of soul coins or just something else occasionally soul coins sometimes the souls themselves do you know we some backstory first and i'm going to explain to bernie what happened to us in baldur's gate okay Specifically highlighting um, Thirstwell's baiting me into killing him. Mm -hmm. 
and Thavius killing himself. If a soul like theirs was coming here, where would be the best place to find them? That really depends on who they had deals with, if they had deals to begin with. If they were under contract, they would most likely begin their time here as Lemurs. They could be anywhere. It seems weird. It, it seems counterproductive for... Krieg especially, who made the contract that condemned El Terrell to demote himself in power when he'd gained so much from Zarya. Lemurs, all devils really, are able to work their way up through the levels of devils here. They gain more and more power until they usually become pit fiends. Once they've reached that level, they are more powerful than any human. Or other creatures in the material realm. Where would an ambitious Lemur go to gain power quickly? I'm going to look that up because I don't know. <laughs> um, let me look it up. Aiden is basically like, where can we find the juiciest piece uh -huh. of bait to lure uh -huh. Ellen to us? Or where would he go to find something? Like, what, I'm, I'm looking for his hunting grounds. If he's, mm -hmm. if he's quite literally a bird of prey, like, I'm looking for where there's lots of little critters. Okay. Explains why he went to El Terrell. Yeah. Souls. Obviously, majority yeah, rather than neutral or good, but... But the grounds around there where the demons and the devils are fighting would be prime territory. Yeah. When they arrive here, they emerge from the River Styx. Okay. They are of low station, but they can generally find work. They would likely go or try to find some sort of devil city town. Some place where they could find work and make their way through the ranks. Make them away. Okay. Huh. They want to be where the people <laughs> are. All right. I want to be where the people are. No, we don't want to get dinged by Disney. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to get more information on where they might go. Uh, hmm. Let me look at my Avernus map. Give me just one second. Does yours actually have labels on it? Because that would be a marked improvement from ours. Mine does, because I have the DM map. Cool. All right. <laughs> so give me one moment. You would likely find them perhaps the Stygian Docks, Bell's Forge. Docks? Perhaps the Pit of Shumrath. It really just depends. They could be anywhere. But the Stygian oh, Dock, Shum Shumrath. Pit of Shumrath. S H U M M R A T H. M -M -R -A -T -H. Okay. But the Stygian Dock would likely be where they would emerge. Okay. They'd move their way to Bell's Forge or even beyond. Okay. And if the sticks normally erases memory, would they have any sense of self when they crawled out? Hmm. Or is that only for non-native beings like us? I believe they would have memory of who they were, but that is most likely all. 
Okay. Then they may remember if they know who they were, they would know that they used to be powerful. That might drive them. Okay. Stygian docks, Bell's Forge, Pit of Shumrath. You are. I can never thank you enough. <laughs> Thank you again, Bernie. Thank you. Thank him. Thank Thank you. Of course. You're welcome. I will see it done. He has all of my odes. Even the ones I made to her and her mother. I... I... I care about her. And I think I need to deliver some good news for a change. Of course. Just so you know, Aiden, your friends, if they come to speak to me, they will not remember me like you do. Once they leave, they take three steps from me. They will not remember speaking to me. So you will have to relay any information yourself. Okay. I... You're undercover. I get it. That's really cool. <laughs> uh, thank you. I'll... I'll... You're the first... <laughs> You're the first living... Metallic I've ever met. I, I <laughs> and she just kind of chuckles. I, I've met. I don't know if they're famous or infamous, but Miriam and Anser. I made this for Miriam. I'm just gonna hold up the shield. I know Miriam. I, she would like that. She loves her stories. She does. I never understood, though. She's she's a spirit now. She doesn't have to be so crammed down in those tunnels, you know? Like, she could just be whatever size she wanted to be. Instead, she's like... Which, uh, I'll, that's, that's for another... <laughs> if I ever get out of here, I'll ask her. Um, I, I'm gonna... Very well. Thank you. And Aiden's going to follow the little handy hanging signs okay. to find the spa. And you are able to go into the bathhouse. You see Cressida kind of relaxing um, on kind of a, like a stone, like one of those heated stone kind of bed chairs. Um, you see Lulu kind of lounging in one of the baths. Mip, what would you be doing in the spa at this point? Um, to be honest, just, hanging out and waiting in any kind of um, sitting area that they have. Okay, yeah, so there's comfortable chairs and, like, almost like, I don't want to say love sacks, but, yeah, like bean bags where you could sit and just kind of relax. Um, people bring tea or, like, small snacks, grapes, apples, things like that. Um, but, yeah, Aiden, you walk in and, and kind of see everybody just kind of relaxing and enjoying some quiet time here. No, Lulu, you don't eat the cucumber. It's for over the eye. But it tastes <laughs> so good. You can have more afterwards. Just leave these ones here. <laughs> <laughs> and so she takes her she takes the one in her tusk and puts it on one eye, and she has the other eye open. She's kind of this feels weird. <laughs> she has them on her tusks or her trunk. She oh, she has one on her like t trunk, and she like puts it back over her eye, and oh. <laughs> chewing the other one that she had over the other eye because it's already in her mouth. Aiden's probably going to, like, barge in and realize, like, oh, no, uh, this is, like, a spa and out and, and, you know, this robe, get a towel, head in here, be, you know, observe proper spa etiquette. Okay. <laughs> um, And just be, like, like, jittery, manic, like, trying to gauge the moment when, like, things are cool to upset the chill 
that I know everyone needs. <laughs> Cressida, I want you to roll an insight check with advantage when you see Aiden in his kind of jittery state. <laughs> Seventeen. Okay, you definitely get the sense that something's up with Aiden. You're not quite sure what, though. She'll swing her feet over the edge of the stone, so she's like actually properly seated versus like the kind of like Shay Lounge mm -hmm. style she was in before. Aiden, you seem frazzled. What's wrong? I've had. I. There's word about your father. Upon hearing that, she kind of like is taken back a little bit, and then she like leans forward in the chair. Good word or bad word? He, he's been here, and he may be back within days. That's spectacular, yet complicated. Didn't we overhear that the camp moves nightly? Yes, but I, I've spoken to the, the some of the staff. Uh, Bernie, the barber, she's she's seen him. He has a meal here two three times a week he finds them as they go he he eats and relaxes and recharges and bathes and departs again he's he's on the move but he seeks this place out it's incredible news that means if, if he doesn't stop by tonight uh, and if Lulu doesn't know the direction we ought to be heading in. Perhaps we can travel with them another night and see. And if not, then it gives me somewhere to leave word. Maybe? Yes. Um, if you leave word, leave word for Elin. His name is Elin. She takes like the biggest breath and then kind of like holds it. Elin. How spectacular. Now if only we can find a face for that name. I say he... You look a bit like him. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> that must mean he's incredibly charming, right? <laughs> and she's like be, trying to like. He's got to be beautiful. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, I just, I don't know. This is a lot to process. I'm terribly excited, but apprehensive. Only because I don't want this family reunion so to speak to get in the way of our purpose here we need to make way to help Alterel. and if nothing else we now know somewhere he frequents we came here to find him and now i know where to we don't know where they'll bring the caravan next. I think we should stay with them until you find him, until you get to see him. I, and he's going to go over to Cressida's things and just pick up the stone, the sending stone. It's worth it to let her hear his voice. Yeah, that would be quite a treat for her. For us all, really. If 
he can survive here for this long, contract or no contract, if that's what his journal implied, then perhaps he'll have insight on how we can do the same. He, he is contracted to collect souls, as I understand it. For another uh, name that we know. I'm sorry? Mip. Yeah? Please, um, you need to be a part of this. Yeah, I, I've been here. I, I'm still... I, yeah, I'd... Oh, sorry. I'm yeah. completely... You're behind the edge of my chair. I didn't realize. He's got big ears. He can hear us. <laughs> yeah. And she calls him over so that he can sit on the little chair with Lulu. So then now they've got this little four square all together to chat about this. And kind of puddle everybody up, scooch chairs together. And he's here under contract. He's paying off a soul debt essentially he's he's collecting souls for Julius like um, Hyper's Julius yeah Mahadi Mahadi said that Julius Julius is an arch devil. Oh. My stars. Um, do you think that Piper has any idea? Don't know. Do you think that Piper has a contract? I don't know. What other reason could an arch devil have for her? He was part, or he claimed to be. No, I suppose he was, because we did meet. Um, scrolling through notes, one moment, pause, <laughs> pause. <laughs> what was Manor Born Lady's name? Uh, Marianne. Marion. Yeah, he he was working with Marianne and the Whisper. But knowing what we know now, we don't know how truthful that all is. What if that's his silent manipulation of things above ground? What if that was how he was securing Baldur's Gate? I think that's, I don't know how much to doubt that or if that is a kernel of truth in something larger, like the whisper wasn't about just collecting secrets and, and writing wrongs, but if it was about collecting secrets and blackmailing. If it was a means to coerce people into contracts. Not to give them a way out. No. For them to trade one set of problems for another. He was mentoring Cressida. I'm looking at the titles. He was <laughs> mentoring Piper on how to be one of these whisper agents. Maybe it was some kind of step scheme of collecting compromise. Uh, sorry. Piper I... was under the care of Julius, well, when her mother disappeared, it's 
my you think her mother had a contract then? Perhaps her mother didn't disappear. Perhaps her mother is now being called in to fulfill her contract as well. Maybe. Or maybe her mother is fulfilling Piper's contract. Or maybe he was grooming Piper to be one of his warlocks. I, I don't know. But if we find him, if we find your father, we might find out. Well, certainly learn a lot more than we have right now. But even so, mm. what we've just uncovered, it will inform our steps moving forward. And any more time we can give Lulu She's still, like, periscoped with her little trunk. She's got. Water. She's kind of above water now. Her head, and she's just kind of listening okay. to everything. All right. The more time we can give you, the, uh, the better you can steer us. I think I just need a rest, and I gotta just think about it some more. It's there somewhere. I just need to uncover it. Do you what better place to rest about... than the spa? <laughs> yeah. Do, do you remember anything about Maggie's ritual that we could try to help? Or or hmm. do, does... I know that, like, sometimes smells bring back memory better than anything <laughs> else. Is there anything we could do? Anything we could get you to, to help... <sighs> I jog think... memories? No, I think I just... I need to think quietly about where okay. we need to go next. Uh, okay. Um, I, I really so thought what... the hill was the way, but obviously I was wrong. You That's okay. mentioned the hill by name. Harriman's Hill? Yes. Did you know why it was prior to us going there? Hmm. No, it's always been Haramon's Hill as long as I can remember. Yeah, but... Haraman was a companion of Zariel? He was. He so... was transformed into the Narzugan you, built, you beat. That so you will have known that Har it was that Haraman's Hill? Yes. Is... It's where he punished people who betrayed Zariel. Without giving it too much thought, are there any other places that come to mind like that? There are two places that might be important to finding the citadel. There's a place where demons manifest and another place where demons are destroyed. And Either one of those places we could probably, probably find a, a better path. Well. I'm just wondering whether there's more to your this place being this Harriman and the hill and these other two places that are important to your mind, whether they whether they are just important and for us to actually attend in the first place regardless of whether they definitively lead us to the sword or not. I think those two sites, I just don't remember exactly where they are. I have to think about it. 
overnight. Mm. I think either of those places might help us, might lead us ultimately to the Bleeding Citadel. Bleeding Citadel. If there's a place where demons are destroyed, that could be a battleground. Yeah. Uh, and learn some information about demon blood. It's not good to handle, particularly. I've obtained some masks that might be able to help us if we do encounter it. And if we end up fighting them, we're going to be up close and personal. It's not great. And he hands Aiden or a, um, a mask. If we're fighting them, and we, if we get any of it on us, this might protect us a bit. Okay. Well, like I was saying, there's... Bernie gave me some details about what she knows about Aelin. He's been contracted to collect souls, but he's looking more for evil souls than the good souls that Julius wants him to collect. That got me thinking about where to find evil souls. And that brought me to Krieg and Thirstwell, who both seemed to want to want us to kill them or want to die to get down here. We would have come back as lemurs probably emerged somewhere by the Stygian docks and headed for somewhere where these lower rank, these rank and file devils could gain power. And that would be Bell's Forge or the Pit of Shumrath. Um, I'm going to lay the map out that I have and show it to Lulu. Or even just give it to Lulu and say, if you can meditate on this, if seeing the lands and 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 anything like this helps jog your memory as to what might be closer to any of those spots, whether it's this where they're made or where they're they're destroyed, that might give us a better direction of, of where to go. If if this I mean, we heard from Maggie that these portals open up where the demons are created and then come through into the plane all over the place. So finding one spot where they're created, the spot may not be there when we get there. If there's a spot where they're definitively being destroyed, that might be more concrete. That could also be, if that's where they're being destroyed, that could be where weaker devils are going to kill demons and gain power that could help us find some of these evil souls that Elin is looking for and if we can help him collect him we can help him pay off his contract faster like I said Mip, the most good for the most people yeah in this case specifically to make sure that a person that we care about gets out of trouble. And to ensure for once in a while that doing good is rewarded. Yeah. He could have paid off his contract a whole lot sooner if he'd yeah. if he'd handed over good souls rather than evil. But 
he's he wouldn't he's kept his, yeah he's kept his principles and i can't tell you how refreshing that is to hear in a place like this yeah especially with everything that's happened so i think we need to stay here we need to find him speak to him and find out how to help him because if we can help him maybe he can help us at the very least he's one less person we have to worry about he's a Although, fallen angel he's a fallen something i don't know exactly what kind it's of just crescent calliope referred to him as an angel i, I don't know if that was just a, a descriptive or if that's truly sort of what rank he held i mean there's all kinds of celestial uh, it's creatures just Lulu, a... what do you know about other celestial servants who are you a servant of? you were a servant of lathander who are you talking to lulu lulu Ask Lulu, think, like, what? Uh, Lulu... How familiar is she with other like celestial beings? If she could pin down, oh, he might be this or he might be that, and then I don't remember which god Lulu was a servant of. Let but me I think check and see. I just want to make sure if she was if she was I the mean, same she as served Zariel. Zariel. Well, was and a... Zariel was an angel of Lathander mm. or Corm. I don't remember. Lathander. Lathander. Okay, so she yeah, Lulu probably served Lathander then. Okay. My memory isn't wonderful still i don't remember a lot That's about okay. celestial beings okay the house might know we could we should we could talk to the house you and i we could we could go to the library and as you're what? sitting there lulu's looking at this map and she you see this kind of flash of realization as she points to two spots on the map these are the spots the spawning trees or the demon zapper. And looking at the map, you realize they're both equal distance, equal distance from Haruman's Hill, where you're at now, camped out for the evening. Those are the spots. I Is remember. There... Awesome, Lulu. This that's that's phenomenal. Do do you know? Does does anyone here know where the Stygian docks or this forge or this pit are? Are they closer to one of these spots or the other? Let me look at the map again. Okay. Sorry, I'm I'm being okay. very demanding of you, DM. It's I all appreciate good. It, your it, and it's hard to like go back and forth. Let's see. Um The Stygian docks are south of Haramon's Hill. Okay. Bell's Forge is east. And then do you see where the demon zapper and the spawning trees are on your so you probably don't. I will have to like I'll I'll send you a picture with other stuff blurred out. Okay. Erased. Right, um fair, but fair. I will I will kinda of point out where the demon zapper and the spawning trees are. Um like I said, the Stygian dock is, is south. Bell's Forge okay. is is east, and then the demon zapper and the spawning trees are very, very close to each other. Or you know, equal distance from Haruman's Hill in different directions. Okay. The... Um, one will lead us down a path of demons, the other will lead us down a path of devils. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Well... Personally, I like the idea of going for this demon zapper. Anything that's going to give us insight as to how to beat these things is okay in my book. Um, but, you know, if the spawning trees are closer to the docks or the forge or the pit... They're all kind of then... equal distance. Okay. All right. Because you've got... You're at Haramon's Hill... The Stygian docks is right here, and then on either side, really equal distance from where you are right now, are the Demon Zapper and the Spawning Trees on the map. Okay. So we could 
we could basically go to the Stygian docks and try and figure out which direction Thavius or or Thirstwell went, and then pick one of these out of the trees of the Zapper. It's up to you guys, I guess. I vote Zapper, but that's just me. We could also ask where the camp is headed. True. Potentially. Mahadi might have a laid out plan for a trajectory. We could always ask him where he intends on going so that okay. we can make the decision together if we choose to stay with Mahadi through tomorrow to travel with or if we take off on our own after our rest this evening towards a new location. We should also ask Mahadi if he's ever attacked by any of those warlords. Yeah. If anyone ever tries to raid that if we stick with Remember that Mahadi Mahadi's he's under contract with Asmodeus. He is protected. Nobody oh, he's will under yeah. Okay. Yes. Anybody who enters is under protection. Um Asmodeus does so. not allow anybody to interfere with him. Okay. I don't remember that coming up, but yeah, uh, he, good to know. He said you were under contract while you're here being under protection. So Oh, I okay. I thought we were under contract that, with Mahadi. I didn't oh, know Mahadi no. was under contract. It's a with higher contract. Else. Yeah. Okay. As a result, people was... who enter here are safe. Asmodeus will not allow anyone to touch the wandering emporium. Okay. Um, that was not explained before, but that's good to know. All right. I figured that's why he was rolling with all these these infernal war machines, because they were like his like guard. Mm -mm. All right. The reason I okay. brought up the possibility of your father being a fallen angel before, is that a hornet's nest? Oh, they eat people like my father. Yeah. What are you implying? No, I'm just saying that's a potential problem and maybe he wouldn't be wanting to go near this specific spot. Oh. Okay. There. Should Perhaps we... based on trajectory, that's why he hasn't been here for a few days. Well, maybe. Maybe he knew they were going to an inhospitable spot. Okay. Zariel's a fallen angel. Do you think a bunch of hell wasps are going to go after the Archduke of Avernus? <laughs> I mean, they're bugs. I don't know that no pun intended, they'll make but that. Hell no. <laughs> I dare say they wouldn't last long if they did try. No. Nah, hell well, wasps against Ariel? She'd waste them. Like one giant bug zapper. Yeah. I don't know, maybe like a hundred of them. Mm. Might. Just one of those might, giant, just a gigantic electrified, you know, bug zapper just one of those tennis racket yeah, looking just things. Yeah. Takes the whole wasp nest out. Who knows? Yeah. He's like, I think we should rest. Yeah. I might have more insight tomorrow morning after I study the map a little bit more and think about it. Okay. All right. Do we rest here? Do we rest in the house? If we go to the house, we could we could read up on celestials if you wanted to. If, if that would help your memory at all, if you think, if if I don't know, I don't know if stimulation helps as much as relaxation. I I I probably just need to sleep and maybe dream a oh. little bit more. Okay, all right. Sorry, I'm I'm kind of nagging. <laughs> wow. it's 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 today's been a big today's been big for me. Um, Okay. Are you going to 
rest in the mansion tonight or are you going to rest out with the wandering emporium what would you guys like to do for the evening hi rosie ladies choice i guess that it will open the mansion for those that would like use of it um but she's going to spend some time wandering the emporium um before she decides to turn in for the night okay Aiden would kind of stay. Aiden wouldn't go into the to the to the mansion right away either. He would mm. kind of understanding just how much of a seismic shift he's put into into Cressida's whole situation. He's going to kind of hang back and keep an eye on her. Okay. Oh, it's a rosy. I will <laughs> say, uh, Moritz and Piper go into the mansion and kind of spend their evenings yeah. there, kind of relaxing and resting, reading. Snacking. Makes sense. The food's a little bit less hamster filled in the mansion. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh. Aiden's gonna try and uh, eventually Aiden's gonna be like, "Hey, house, can you make celestial caramel? Like, <laughs> you know, like the best caramel you've ever tasted. It's not made please. of celestials. It's just celestial caramel." You know yeah, I mean? like that's got to be. Done, so. Yeah, like oh my god, caramelized sugar grown in like Arborea or on like Celestia or something. Oh my god, you know, <laughs> again, no pun intended, but just yeah. What was it? It was it was was it an apple pie? Caramel apple tart, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, an apple. An a so the apples would probably have been grown in Arborea, if I know anything about. Arborea, that's like the wild agrarian heaven. Oh my god. Oh god, Rosie. She's sticking That would be like 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 that 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 tart would literally like sing like a like a like a <laughs> choir when you put it on the plate. <laughs> you put it down and it has like this slight like it all of a sudden you put it down and it's out of focus for a split second and then when it goes into focus it's now like the prettiest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. It's got Trogdor style majesty lines coming <laughs> off it at all times. Like, yeah. Slightly shimmery. <laughs> yeah. You put it in a dark room and it glows on its own. <laughs> all right. So you Except all the Morticia Adams eye light. Like, yeah. Take care of your evenings as you see fit. And prepare for another day in Avernus. Another night's rest. And that's where we're gonna end to today's session. Right. And we have a very sleepy puppy right here. Yes, you do. Just, oh, oh my goodness. She just, I'm just going to oh, go oh, oh. Um But everybody, thanks for coming and hanging out today. Um, like It's sometimes harder to run a session. We have fewer members here, especially in Avernus, because combat can be very tricky. But we appreciate everybody coming and hanging out for this um, amazing RP session with uh, Vin, Kate, and Devin. We thank you guys for coming and hanging out, and we hope to see you again next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye, thanks, guys. guys. We're going to go to thank the you. thanks for watching screen. Mm -hmm. I got a puppy in my neck. <laughs>